Hello to you all, and welcome to the fifth episode of our hashtag Why LKC Medicine podcast, where we turn the spotlight on LKC Medicine's MBBS program. I'm Hafez Sori Zanjani, a LKC Medicine Year 1 student and your host for today. We'll be talking more about our unique team-based learning and anatomy sessions, and I know you would love to hear more about it. Our guest today will give you all the answers you need. Please welcome Yang Li Shan, Lead TBL Facilitator and Assistant Professor Srini Basulu Redi Mogali, Anatomy Lead. So, uh, Li Shan and uh, Prof Redi, would you like to introduce yourselves? Why don't we start with Li Shan? Hello, hello. Thank you for um, inviting us, Hafiz. Is, I'm very happy to be here. So, my name is Yang Li Shan and I am the Lead for TBL Facilitation here at LKC Medicine. And I've been here for, I think, um, six and a half years already. Great. Prof Redi? Hi, thank you, Afis, for your kind introduction. I'm Brady. I'm head of anatomy at Lee Kong Chin School of Medicine. I look after uh, delivery of anatomy curriculum. Yeah, I've been with uh, LKC Medicine for almost like uh, seven years now. Great. Welcome to you both. And really thank you for being with us and for taking time out to share a little bit more about what is so unique about LKC Medicine. Um, and definitely TBL and anatomy are one of the more unique aspects of LKC Medicine. So um, why don't we start a little bit with TBL. So Lishan, could you tell us how you facilitate TBL sessions, especially in, in such a big class? Like my class has 163 people. So how do you handle all of that? Yeah, that's actually a great question that many people actually ask us. So a lot of um, facilitation is classroom management. And uh, when we do face-to-face -face sessions, as opposed to Zoom sessions, it's actually a little bit different. But I think it's a question that you ask a little bit later as well. But um, I think there's a lot of classroom management to make sure that everybody gets a chance to be heard. Because here we have 163 students. We have um, our content experts who sometimes can be up to even six content experts. Sometimes they also bring in people who are their guests to contribute or also just to sit in and observe. So there's a lot of people with um, a lot of questions, not just students. Sometimes the content experts also want to ask students questions and we have to manage things like time. We have to manage students' engagements. We have to manage students' questions to make sure everyone who has a question has a chance to be heard on their questions. And basically also balance the content experts' needs because um, sometimes they also have certain key points that they really want to get to and um, we need to manage that along with the flow of the session. So um, there is a lot going on in TBL and I see that our main role actually to distill everything is just to keep the session as student-centered as possible, to ensure that students are heard, to ensure that things are happening on time and they're not dragging too much or they're not speeding up too quickly such that people's questions and points get glossed over. So that's basically what our job is. Wow, yeah, great. And and I've also noticed in, in TBLs, when I attend TBLs, that the TBL facilitator is always the one who is keeping everything on track and making sure that we have all our questions answered. And, and sometimes even the TBL facilitators have questions of their own, which is quite amusing. Yeah. So, Prof. Freddy, why don't you share with us a little bit about how you teach anatomy at LKC Medicine and what's really unique about learning anatomy at LKC? Sure. I think anatomy teaching at LKC Medicine is quite unique compared to any traditional medical schools. Anatomy has got two components. It has got practical and theory component. So for practical, a, most of the learning actually happens in the practical lab where the students are using the various anatomical tools like bastinated specimens and the various technological tools to learn anatomy. So to answer your question about what is unique, we teach integrated curriculum. So the anatomy is embedded in a system-based curriculum. And the, the main teaching tool is here is the bastinated specimen, which are actually real bodies. People have donated their bodies for the purpose of medical education. And these bodies have been preserved and treated with special polymers such that they are preserved forever. So, so the students are students have access to these authentic anatomical tools. And uh, LKS Medicine is one of the pioneer delivering anatomy teaching using plastic specimens. So in addition to that, we have we use almost all uh, modalities of imaging, which is a key when the students go to the clinical wards on a daily basis, they will look at a lot of x-rays, CT scans and MRI. So integrating radiology into the anatomy is another key thing in our curriculum. 
in addition to these, because anatomy is more visual subject, it's a 3D subject. So to help the student building up their 3D anatomy, we use two-dimensional virtual models, which are life-size, so which, which help the student to perform the virtual dissection so that they can explore the body in and out. They can make the cross-sections in any part of the virtual body to identify and to uh, explore the internal anatomy. And again, this helps for them to read and interpret the cross-sectional anatomy in uh, CT and MRI scans. This is another unique thing. So the, we use extensive uh, technology to help the students understanding. And anatomy is not taught by only anatomists. It is, it is taught by a, a multidisciplinary team of experts where we have anatomists, surgeons, radiologists, pathologists. So all the different the faculty from the different disciplines, they, they bring in their specialities to enhance the relevance of anatomy. So, so here we teach not just fact, it is to we teach the anatomy in the relevance of its function and its, uh, its clinical application and relevance. Awesome. And I can really echo what Prof already shared about having plus plastinated specimens and our silent mentors really being there for us all the time. And they're just there available for us and, and we are forever indebted to them. They are really silent mentors, you know. So you're, the students are actually learning and appreciating the precise anatomy from these bodies. Even in fact, our the first cohort of students, they even gave the name to the, we don't call them no more, we don't call them as bodies. We name them as, as Andrew or Henry or Anna. So these are the names suggested by the students. Yes, the and, names have stuck yeah. since the first cohort. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, and, and yeah. I think my, my cohort had the enormous, enormous privilege of uh, participating in the naming of our newest silent mentor, uh, who is Anna. And I Correct. think that, that, that was great. Yeah. yeah. So that's all about anatomy. And one of the things that I really enjoy about anatomy myself is the imaging portion that Prof Reddy was, was mentioning. And it's really hands-on. So for instance, when we are learning about ultrasound, we get to ultrasound uh, ourselves and have a look at what's going on inside ourselves, which, which is very, very good in terms of helping us understand the relevance and also keeping it stuck in our heads. So right now, the big topic of the day is COVID-19. So I, I want to explain a little bit about how COVID-19 has really changed the way that we interact with each other and also how we have lessons. So maybe Lishan, you mentioned this earlier, but why don't you tell us a little bit about how DBL has changed in light of COVID? I think we're very lucky because TBL is something that is brought online a lot more easily than something like anatomy. So I don't envy what my colleague Prof Reddy has had to go through at all to bring it online. But I think for ETBL, we were very fortunate because somehow in October 2019, we had a very comprehensive BCP business continuity plan already in place for ETBL. So when everything happened in February, there was some panic amongst the previous vice dean and also for education and also previous assistant dean for year one, year two. But somehow we were like, hey, don't panic. We have this. And they were like, wow. So we rolled it out practically overnight and it worked really well. And we did it very much with the support of the digital learning mint. And I think that the key difference for us was how do we make sure that students are still engaged when we're not in the same physical space together? How do we know that people are still following how do we know that they're not getting lost somewhere? Because already in face-to-face -face class, sometimes you can see when you walk around, people are online shopping, playing games, things like that going on. But there's certain things I think that you really just have to let go and you can't control everything, uh, whether it's face-to-face -face or whether it's in ETBL. So for me personally, that has not changed very much. And um, if in fact, for ETBL, especially in the early weeks of the circuit breaker, we saw that students were so much more actually involved, engaged and participative. I think it's because they can't really go anywhere and that was their opportunity to really still engage in activity that gave them a sense of normalcy. So they really threw themselves into the TBLs, really threw themselves into the teamwork in working on the case scenarios together. So that was really amazing to see. And even though, you know, we started with phase two, we started opening up a bit more, it didn't really change all that much. I find that our students in general are very much motivated and um, dedicated bunch. And when we put them together in their teams, everybody wants to be accountable and everybody wants to pull their weight. So in that sense, I feel that ETBL going online has really worked very, very, very well. We had some of the longer sessions than even when you know when we all had to be in the same learning studio together. Those sessions, some of, some of them, the same sessions didn't even go as long as you know the ones that we have run on ETBL have. So I think that people are doing quite well, are quite enjoying themselves on the online session. 
Yep. And I would like to hope that our level of enthusiasm and engagement has not decreased through ETBL as COVID progresses. And I know something that we as students, what we do is that we meet up among our own teams in one physical location, be it in a hall or somewhere in CSB to do TBL together, which might not have been possible during Circuit Breaker. Lah. So I, I think that's that's really great. Thanks for sharing, Rishan. What, what about you, Prof Reddy? Like, how has COVID-19 affected the way that you teach anatomy? Oh yeah, I mean, this is a difficult question and also interesting question because anatomy is a very visual subject. I mean, you require a physical object in your hand in order to appreciate uh, you know, different tissues and uh, how they are related to each other, how the nerve is related to the artery and how they are running, which is front, which is back, which is right, left, so on. So, which, is, which actually requires a physical subject in front of you in order to appreciate that. But I think during the circuit breaker period, by that time, we delivered most of anatomy except the musculoskeletal anatomy for for your one student, which means your senior students, current year two students. For that batch, since there was no access to the campus, so we had to convert all our face-to-face practical sessions to online. So I think we are glad that we actually converted all our anatomy plus native specimens. I mean, what I mean to say, we digitized all anatomy specimens. So literally we have the virtual copies of all the specimens and we provided these specimens to the students with guided teaching materials. So which it actually helped them I can't say it is the same experience of the face-to-face, but I think in that particular situation, that is the best possible option we had, providing the all the digital content and then the providing uh, the video demonstrations of these specimens. Since we already had all of them, we provided and we guided the student learning and, and it went well. And luckily, the new academic started in August 2020. The situation has improved. And then we brought the students into anatomy labs in a smaller groups, but with enhanced measures that again, that requires a precise planning and execution because we have to maintain the physical distance in the groups between the students and the teaching in smaller groups that requires additional teaching load on the faculty. But overall, I think this year we could able to deliver anatomy practical teaching face to face while there was a lot of planning was required but because we, we have got an excellent support system in the school to do that. So hopefully the same would happen in the next year. I mean, the coming academic year where the situation will be, I hope situation would be under control. Uh, when it comes to the TBL, sorry for my, this is a bit longer. Uh, re- regarding the TBL, uh, as Lisan said, when it comes to in terms of anatomy, it's again a visual subject. Maybe the face-to-face would have been better. But I realized that, in fact, during the online situation, the interactivity enthusiasm much more than the, uh, this is my personal experience. So the number of questions we get from the students is actually much more than face-to-face sessions. So this, this is something which I noticed in online TBL sessions. Yep, and that's really true what you said, Prof. Reddy, in the sense that online, I think you're just right there. At the, everyone is at the front of the class. And because everyone is at the front of the class, everyone is really just listening and engaging in a way that has them ask really, really great questions. And something else that you said that I think is really, really great is that COVID-19 has actually accelerated the rate at which we innovate, such that last year when we were forced to produce you know, 3D models online, augmented 3D models, this is something that people in my batch and batches to come are going to benefit from because innovation has uh, accelerated, which is which is really awesome. And, and Lishan, you might not know this, but Prof Reddy actually has uh, had his hand at TBL facilitation during the Annette uh, test that we have. And, and I think he's really, really great at it. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. he is. Yeah, he's been sitting in on so many. You know, if you like to join the team. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I mean, some of the facilitation skills actually I picked up from uh, facilitators like from you, from from Preman and others. <laughs> Yeah, and it's really, really great. I, I think my whole batch really loves it. Um, let's move to a more light-hearted topic right now. Why do you choose to teach at LKC Medicine? Like, what, Lishan, you've been here for like six and a half years, I think. Prof. Red, you've been here for seven years. What has you want to continue teaching at LKC Medicine? I think for me, it's definitely the students. This is actually the easiest question of all to answer here because honestly, our students are such a motivated and dedicated, intelligent bunch. They're also multi-talented. And um, you guys are, you know, I always love seeing how hard you guys work and how constructive you are in your attitude that you all, you know, approach your work and your studies as well as even your playtime. And uh, yeah, so it's really just the students. Great. What about you, Prof. Reddy? 
I think I echo with Lishan a similar opinion. Yeah, I, I love uh, interacting uh, students. I've been teaching for for many many years. So what I like here is the student centered learning approach. So here I hear more from the students rather than me talking more. So uh, I want to hear from my students what was their thought process, how they are building their knowledge, how they are communicating. So I love that, and then I chip in where my help is required. And if the students are not getting the concepts right, then I chip in and then I clarify their questions and doubts. So overall, I like that that student-centered approach rather than a one-man show, which is like a teacher delivering a didactic lecture. Yeah, and thank you so much to both of you. I think that's really, really heartening to hear. And I love the TBL facilitation team. I absolutely love the anatomy team and everyone who's like really involved in that. Not just the teachers, but also the support staff as well. So that's something that's really, really great. And I think you know, Prof really put it very, very nicely. But I think for me, the experience is that we really get put on the spot as students when Prof really asks us a question, for example, or in TBL facilitation, when suddenly your name is. called uh, in front of the whole 163 people and and you have to answer a question i think that really keeps us on our toes and that's an awesome way to learn i think so right now you know as we round up the podcast lishan prof ready why don't you tell us a little bit about what the students coming into lkc medicine what can they look forward to in tbl and in anatomy moving forward and i think we heard a lot about that already but what really is there to look forward to I think they can look forward to, as Rady also mentioned, right? Active learning. We don't do lectures at all here. I mean, you watch your lectures online before you come for TBL, so we don't actually have any class time when you actually are hearing the long droning lectures. You're here to work in your teams. You're here to get engaged with your teammates, with the class at large, with the content experts. You're here to really. Feel how you would when you go out and work because you're working with your colleagues, your teachers, or your future colleagues. You know things like that. So I think that's what you have to look forward to. Also, you have a lot of hard work, lah. I think to look forward to. But that's part and parcel of being in medical school anywhere. So I'm really excited for those of you who are going to come and deciding to come and join us at um, LKC. Awesome, thanks, Lishan, and I'm also looking forward to having everyone join us. What about you, Prof. Reddy? What can people look forward to in, in anatomy? Uh, I, I think in anatomy, definitely they can look forward to first-class anatomy teaching, and uh, I think that is a kind of unique experience every medical student will have, uh, not only just in the medical school throughout their uh, career in their medicine. I think LKC Medicine is not only just is a medical school; it is a is a family. So you would expect a good sense of community. And can look forward to a great support system. So you you have all your senior students, faculty, other staff who help you to guide you to ensure that you you are experience your time in LKC Medicine is most memorable and uh, is most experience one. Awesome. And I would just like to echo what Lishan and Prof Reddy said about you no know, really LKC being a place where you work hard but you play hard as well, and where there is family. For me personally, uh, one of the biggest reasons I chose LKC Medicine was I walked through the campus and I felt more at home in LKC Medicine. The vibes were just there, and so uh, that's one of the. Big reasons that I chose uh, LKC Medicine, and you're absolutely right. We really do have living faculty, staff, students, seniors, even graduated students, and and that's something that I really really enjoy about. Being a student at LKC Medicine, and so that actually marks the end of our podcast today. Oh wait, Hafiz! Thank- actually, I think it's interesting that you mentioned campus because um, we do have a dual campus, and I think that's part of the the beauty of LKC as well is that there's so many resources to be drawn upon. So not just from you know our hospitals, our NHG partners, and you know the LKC itself, but also from the larger NTU. That's uh something that I I find that students, especially when you know we're done with all this、uh, restrictions and stuff, you will get to move around the campuses a lot more as well. Yeah, and certainly I have benefited tremendously from having a, a dual campus. I stay in the NTU campus in Hall, but I spend a lot of time in the CSB campus, and that's really something that I really, really、uh, have benefited from. From going to the different libraries in NTU, for instance, we have the Art Design Media Library that really has a lot of very good technology that I can use and and benefit from. And in the CSB campus, you know, you could really just stop anyone and and ask them. 
them questions and you can really get involved in what's going on in CSB. For instance, um, I recently saw Prof Ranganath, one of the anatomy professors, is actually uh, conducting a research study and he's invited students to, to join him. And I think that's really, really great. Yeah. So before we round out, anything that Lishan or Prof Reddy you'd like to share with our prospective students coming in? No? Prof Reddy? I think we covered most aspects. Yeah. I think I look forward to seeing them soon. Yeah, me too, Prof. Me too. So thank you so much for your time today, Lishan and Prof. Reddy. And thank you to our listeners once again for tuning in. And I really hope that today gave you an opportunity, a little peek into what life is like at AKC Medicine and what there is to learn and what there is to do. We hope to see you soon. Goodbye.